Step six, strike and dip data. Okay, um, so first of all, I make a new layer and I started off by just doing all strike and dips in one, but later on I uh, make individual layers for the individual lithologies. Just, uh, I, find, I remember I did that in my dissertation, I found it a lot easier that way because um, you could lock in lithologies. So first of all, I go down and use the line tool this time and then you can essentially you can measure out um, exactly what you want your line dis line size to be. I probably made them a bit small in this case, but um, it is just whatever looks best on your map, um, depending on how many you have and, and, and many other variables. So once I've clicked into this, I actually decided on what, what size I'm actually going to keep at, and then select the line tool again and make a line right in the centre. You can see that dot in the centre indicates where the centre of that line is. So it makes it much easier to, to draw a line. So then I pull that out and make it a little bit uh, larger so that you can see it a bit better. And then I select text and put in text. I mean, it's massive here, so I then make it smaller, just so it looks a bit better and even smaller again. And I realise that I'm actually putting the wrong number in. I'm typing 22 rather than 21, which is easily done. And I would now go back and fix that. Okay, so that's me now got a striking dip with the relevant dip data. And the, the orientation of the strike is indicated by the line, so you don't need to put that number on, or at least I, I wouldn't. Um, so then I group the line. And sometimes if you use the help tool and then just search, you can often find things, because sometimes I forget where things are. So now that they're grouped, I then select them and copy them and paste them where I next want them to be. For some reason that they didn't group properly there, so I have to copy them again. And um, then I paste them again. And I move my strike um, and dip to the area that I want the next one to be. So then I amend the number, 26 in this case. And then what you do is you only select the two lines and you can then alter the strike angle. And then I do this again, um, and depending on what lithologies you have, I mean, you may want to do different colour uh, strike and dips for metamorphic versus sedimentary, and then igneous may be different again, depending how many different uh, rock types you have on your map, just for clarity. So again, just orientating it to the right place. Okay, so now that I've done that for all of those striking dips, you can see that I've now finished doing my yellow unit and all its data. Um, you'll notice as well that the striking dip data is above the base map again. Um, I always like to keeping data above the base map, such as boundaries and faults and striking dips, so that they're really clear. You can then go around and just double check everything's kind of the right distance and nice and clear um, in regard to your striking dips so that you don't have. Uh, letters overlie your numbers overlying your lines and so on and so forth. So then you continue on to your next lithologies. You see I've also made a new uh, layer for this like I said before. Um, it just means that in the future if you're trying to alter like one set that you don't accidentally click on another set. Uh, another um, strike and dip from say a different lithology when you're scrolling or something like that and then it doesn't end up um, in the wrong place like I have done previously. So you can see I've now finished that unit. I'm skipping quite a lot here, it does take time. Um, and now I need to go and do the green and the grey unit. So that's me do, uh, done that. I'm just slightly editing it. Just changing numbers. Okay. And that's the green unit data. On. And all I have left on this map is to then go and do this grey unit's data. Be careful not to accidentally select your numbers um, and also rotate them because it's quite nice to have them all kind of straight and, and not tilted because that can make it a bit more confusing and, and a little less clear. Um, so yeah, see again I'm just 
making a new layer. And like I said previously, you can change the layers to also tie into the lithology colors. So there's a bar at the side with the layers, you can change the color. So I'm now going to do all these. Okay, so this is my final one. Choose the number. And as you can see, I've now finished my grey data. By doing this whole copy and paste um, of the strike and dip data lines, um, it ensures that you don't accidentally end up with different uh, length lines and ticks and then different font and font sizes. It just keeps it nice and consistent and looking professional. So I'm just going around and slightly moving things just so that they're well spaced out. You see, that's that done. Okay, and remember to um, save your work regularly.